You have a plate full of delicious carbohydrates and you want to dive into them. Okay. Obviously, that can come with a myriad of potential negative outcomes, right? Like those carbohydrates have two potential outcomes. Okay, two fates. Those carbohydrates can go into your muscles, they can store as muscle glycogen, and they can be very positive for you and help you and help you recover and do lots of amazing things. Or they have fate number two, which is where you have a tad too many carbohydrates and those carbohydrates don't go into the muscle and they go through de novo lipogenesis and they store as fat. Well, one of the ways that we can mitigate this potential issue is by the sequencing of specific foods. And this isn't something that you have to be super freaky about. Like you don't have to be a total weirdo going out to dinner. Like no one would ever even notice that you're doing things a specific way. It just comes down to how you time your food. Now we used to think that fat was going to slow down the utilization or the absorption of carbohydrates. And it does to a certain degree, but we have one major flaw with that. Now, a lot of people poke holes in this, but if you look at some of the research, it's a little bit confusing. If we combine a lot of fat with a lot of high glycemic carbohydrates, that could potentially be bad too, right? Because you have an insulin spike from the carbohydrates along with fat. And think about it like this. If you spike your insulin, that means that your cell doorway is now open because insulin opens the doorway to a cell so that fuel can get in. You spike your insulin along with a bunch of fat. Well, is that fat going to go travel right into a cell really, really easily? So it's somewhat of a hypothesis, but it's also something that some researchers are really concerned with. But when you look at protein prior to carbohydrates, it could be really a powerful thing. Check out this research. So in this particular study, it was published in the journal Nutrition, and it took a look at protein versus fat after having 50 grams of pure glucose. So what they did is on 18 different occasions, 18 different occasions in this particular case, they had subjects overnight fast, consume a 50 gram glucose bolus. So just straight glucose, 50 grams, and then had them consume either zero, five, 10, or 30 grams of protein or fat. Now in this case, it was after their glucose, okay? Now what they found was still interesting. They found that protein controlled the glucose spike. It lessened the glucose spike 2X that of fat. The protein controlled the insulin spike and the glucose spike 2x that of fat. What that tells us is that protein is definitely, or at least seems to be, more powerful at modulating the glucose response from carbohydrates than fat. So what does that mean for you? Well, that means, okay, the more protein that you have, the better. The more protein that you have, the better it's going to be ultimately be for uh, glucose control. But there was a study that was published in the journal Diabetes Care that found that having the protein prior to the carbohydrates had an even more pronounced effect. Check out this research. So in this particular study, two separate occasions, two weeks apart. Okay, first time they had them consume orange juice and ciabatta bread, okay? followed by grilled chicken along with veggies and some butter and a little bit of fat, okay? Then two weeks later, they had them do the opposite. They had them do the grilled chicken, the vegetables, and the fat, and then the ciabatta bread and orange juice. Exact same macronutrients, exact same volume of food. Just one group had the orange juice and ciabatta first. The other group had the orange juice and ciabatta afterwards. Guess what they found? The group that had the protein and fat first had a 28.6% lower glucose response at 30 minutes after eating, okay? They had a 36.7% less glucose response at 60 minutes after eating, and they had a 16.8% less glucose response 120 minutes after eating compared to the group that had the carbohydrates first, okay? So 30 to 37-ish percent lower glucose by having the protein first. That is mind-boggling to me. Not only that, they found that the insulin levels were significantly lower. Protein, protein, 
protein, whether it's a protein shake or a good quality meat, good quality grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And then you have your high protein along with a good amount of healthy fats that comes from that meat. That is what we are looking for. Uh, I did put a link. Today's video is brought to us by ButcherBox. So if you are looking to have good quality grass-fed, grass-finished beef, or just good chicken or good wild-caught fish, check them out. That link is down below. Okay, so ButcherBox allows you to get that meat delivered right to your doorstep. It's super convenient, but the best part is it's grass-fed, grass-finished, really high-quality stuff. So if you like ribeyes, or maybe you like filet mignons, or maybe you like flank steak, or maybe you're someone that likes more like wild-caught fish and you're into that category, it's all protein and it would all work in this case. The more protein that you have, the less your glucose response will be and potentially you're affecting that anti-lipolytic effect, right? So that link is down below. Check them out. They have Tom Stelauer's stamp of approval on them and you know that I am super picky when it comes down to stuff like this. So make sure you check them out down below. Now I'm a mechanistic guy. And that means that I really get interested in like the biochemistry and why certain things are doing certain things. So what is going on with the protein in this particular case? Like why is protein superior to the fat when it comes down to affecting glucose? I think there's a couple different things we have to look at. For one, protein is very powerful at stimulating what's called glucagon-like peptide one. Glucagon-like peptide one, uh, essentially slows gastric emptying, okay? So when we eat protein and we spike this GLP-1, we have a system that slows our gastric emptying, not necessarily right out of our stomach, but everything from our stomach and our small intestine, and that affects our overall glucose uptake. If we're slowing down glucose and we're not able to absorb it as fast, that means that we are maintaining a certain degree of insulin sensitivity because we're not bombarding our body with a bunch of glucose. Additionally, what people don't realize is that glucagon-like peptide affects our insulin sensitivity quite a bit as well. Okay, so when we have an increase in glucagon-like peptide and it happens like regularly, well, it affects how insulin sensitive we are. Now, insulin sensitivity means that when if I were to go and I were to eat some carbohydrates right now, I would have a really big spike in insulin and then it would go away. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would you ever want a high spike in insulin? Well, you want a spike in insulin. You want your pancreatic beta cells to understand that you just consumed carbohydrates. If they understand that you consumed carbohydrates, then there will be a subsequent insulin response in accordance to those carbohydrates that you just ate. And that means that it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, it's done. And we don't have to sit there having like elevated levels of insulin because the body's trying to figure out what to do, okay? Because your insulin sensitivity is high. So that means pancreatic beta cells produce insulin, boom, cells receive it, boom, the system is stopped. Then all of a sudden you're right back to fat burning. You want these quick peaks and that's it, okay? So if glucagon-like peptide is increased and we improve insulin sensitivity, that could be the reason why, okay, if we have protein first, we can get away with eating those carbohydrates with less of an insulin spike and less of that glucose spike. This is such a big, important thing. The other thing that's so important is that, okay, protein is going to give you more nutrition in a, in, per, per volume, let's put it that way, and per calorie, okay? Now, fat, absolutely has nutrition. Don't get me wrong. I'm a very pro-fat guy, right? But here's what we have to think about. If you were to start your meal with, let's just make it simple, three tablespoons of olive oil or five tablespoons of olive oil, okay, you're giving yourself a few hundred calories right then and there with only about that much volume of food. You're going to still be hungry as far as stomach distensibility goes because your stomach's not very full. You're still going to be craving food. So what that tells your body is that I need more food, even though you just consumed three, four, five hundred calories of fat. So fat can absolutely affect glucose in a positive way. Don't get me wrong, but it's way easier to mess up and still overeat by leading with fat. Protein is only four calories per gram compared to fat at nine calories per gram. So the amount of calories per volume of food is less. So if you ate the same amount of calories from protein as you did from fat, you would be eating more than twice as much actual food, right? So you're actually way less hungry. So if you lead with the protein, there's a simple mechanistic kind of hunger action too that we have to pay attention to. 
So leading with the protein, and that's why I always say like, before you go to a restaurant or before you splurge on a heavy dessert, the one cardinal rule is that you have protein in your system first. You have that protein in your system and it makes a huge, huge, huge difference. So protein should be a staple in your house. And this isn't just about meat. If you're plant-based, I don't care. Protein is still gonna be protein. It's still going to have similar effects. Protein from animals might be a little bit harder to digest. So it might sit in your gut longer, having a slightly more pronounced effect. But protein, veggies, carbohydrates, you have more flexibility with it, and fat kind of spaced in between. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out our video sponsor, ButcherBox, down below, and I'll see you tomorrow.